everyone. Uh, my name is Leon, and I'm from Intel. Uh, as a beginner in the area of virtualization, it's my great pleasure to attend this forum. And today, I will, I will talk, some, talk something about QAM level migration optimization. Here we go. Uh, at first, I will introduce the background of level migration, some problems we have to solve, and some issues in the current QMU implementation. Then I will describe our solutions and show you some show you the performance data. At last, I will list the work we plan we are going to do. Low migration plays an important role in cloud computing. It can be used for facilitating maintenance, load balancing, and uh, energy saving. The main optimization goal are to reduce the total level migration time, reduce the VM downtime, and, uh, and improve the level migration success ratio. QEMU and QVM have already implemented some mechanism for optimization. For example, using the RDMA to accelerate the data, data transmission, using XBZRLE to reduce the data traffic and uh, reduce the level migration time, and uh, using auto convergence mechanism to improve the level migration success for ratio. But uh, it's not enough. This slide shows the problems that we have to solve and some of the issues in the current QEMU implementation. The first problem is about lag that affects the level migration performance. In practice, the network bandwidth is most likely to be the bot lag, although there are some fast leak products that can support the 10 gigabps or 40 gigabps bandwidth level. This is still true for the following reason. The first reason is network is usually shared so that we can't use the full bandwidth for low migration. The second reason, one gigabps leak is still widely used for cost consideration. And the third reason, for some use case, like a geographic low migration, the internet network bandwidth will be much lower than the local network bandwidth. So we should do something to improve the level migration performance in this case. Another issue is the uh, needless page processing in the RAM bug stage. As you know, in the low migration, before the run bug stage, all the page was marked, or, or marked, was marked as, 30, as 30. And uh, this will cause all the page to be processed one by one. The data processing includes zero page checking and sending the data out to the destination. In fact, there are a lot of pages that are not used by the guest. So we can skip processing these pages. In the guest, there are still some pages that are used by the guest before and then free. This page is useless for guest and can also be skipped. QMU has optimization for zero pages. If your zero page is uh, detected, only several bytes are sent out to station instead of sending a whole page of zero. This mechanism can speed up, can speed up the low migration process, but we, we can do more optimization by initializing all the destination guest RAM page to zero and skips the transmission of the zero pages. 
by doing this, we can minimize the pace that need to be processed in the RAM bulk state. The third problem is there are two clean up functions called during the pause and copy stage, which prolong the VM downtime, especially with the latest, latest Linux kernel, which contains a patch that drops the small page table entries when it stops the log dirty. The migration and the function core will take dozens of milliseconds. For these problems, we have some solutions. We use multi-thread compression to improve the performance of line migration in low in low network bandwidth environment. And skipping unused page in the RAM bug stage to avoid needless page data processing. And delay the low emergency clean up operation until the data transmission is done. Uh, let me explain why multi-thread compression can accelerate low migration. The first chart shows the time spent on different stage when processing the gas rampage. In no, in no network bandwidth environment, most of the time spent on sending the data to the Compression can make the page data smaller, so sending the compressed page will take less time. But compression itself will take extra time. If compression is fast enough, we can shorten the total, migra total time spent on processing the, the page data. Multi-thread is used for speeding up the compression. Multi-thread is a Multi-thread compression is a new feature for low migration. Instead of sending the guest page directly, this feature compresses the RAM page before sending. And the other related patch have, been already, have already been merged into QEMU 2.4. Multi-thread compression is different from XBZRLE or the both of them use some kind of compression. XBZRLE compresses page, page updates, while multiple thread compression compresses the original page data. Another difference is multi thread compression transfers compressed data in the RAM bulk stage, but XBZRLE cannot do that. Multi-thread compression co-works with XBZILE can minimize the data traffic in theory. So if XBZILE and the multiple threads compression are both turned on, a multi-thread compression only takes effect, takes effect in the RAM bulk stage, and XBZILE will take over the rest of the world. Uh, this chart shows the relationship between the migration thread and the compression thread. In the migration thread, after getting a dirty page, it will check if the page is a zero page. If not, the migration thread will notify the compression thread to do the compression, and then wait for a notification if all the compression threads are busy. When notification arrives, it puts the compressed data to the send buffer. If the send buffer is full, the compressed data will be sent out to the destination. In the compression thread, at first, the thread will, will wait to start until it receives a notification from the migration thread. Once it receives a notification, it starts to do the compression. When the compression is done, it notifies the migration thread and then repeats this process. The so multi-thread decompression works in the same way.
One time all data copy happened when putting the compressed, compressed page data to the QEMU file in the block range, it's loaded to keep the sequence of pages. But one thing we should make, make sure is that if a new block begins, all the pages that belong to the previous blocks should be sent out first. It's very important. Without a, Without multiple thread compression, the CPU usage on the source side during line migration is about 50%. With multi thread compression, if using ZLab to do the compression, the CPU usage on the source side is about 760%. It is very high. There are two solutions to reduce the CPU usage. One, one is to use the faster compression algorithm like quick LD or LD4 instead of ZLab. Another solution is to use a Hardwell compression accelerator to offload the overhead from CPU. Uh, Intel's future chipset will provide this kind of Hardwell support. A lot of optimization we can do is to skip the unused page in the RAM block stage. In the RAM block stage, all the pages are marked as dirty and then processed one by one. It's inefficient because there may ex exist some pages that are used by the guest, especially for an idle guest or a lightweight overhead guest. It's low lead to process the unused pages. When we optimize this by using, a, we can we can optimize this by using a a third page that only contains the used pages. We can achieve this by starting the log dirty before the VM running. The side effect of this uh, this way is the log dirty will affect the guest performance if huge page is used in the guest. Was they are trying to find out some other better ways to solve this issue. Uh, for example, just sp split this huge page into two megabytes page before doing the level migration, and uh, switch to the four key bytes page during the level migration. Anyway, mm, for this issue, we still need more investigation and benchmark. Do some clean, do some clean up operation in the pause and copy stage, may more or less prolong the VM downtime. The clean up operation, the clean up operation should be delayed until the data transmission is finished. The migration end and the block clean up operation are two of the, are two of the operations that can be delayed, can be delayed. Okay. Let me show you some of the performance gain after optimization. This slide shows the performance improvement with multi thread compression. The above table shows the results when migrating an idle guest. The total of migration time reduced about 45%. So we am downtime reduced about 30, 33%. And the Data traffic, network data, tra data traffic reduced about 70%. The table below shows the test results when migrating a guest with workloads which write in read, read, numbers, read, read numbers to a uh, one gigabyte memory error, error periodically. The total of migration time reduced about 57% and VM downtime reduced about 48%. Network, network traffic reduced about 60%. Uh, the performance gain is very obvious.
This table shows the performance comparison between multi-thread compression and uh, XBZILE. The gas runs workloads, uh, which rise read numbers to a uh, two gigabytes memory area periodically. The results show that multi-thread multi -thread compression combined with XBZILE has the best performance. This table shows the performance gain when skipping the unused page in the RAM bug stage. The total migration time reduced about 65%. Six, the results show the, show the possibility of performance gain that we can achieve by doing such an optimization. Also, we need to do more to dismiss the performance impact, but it seems worse. Uh, this table shows the performance gain if delays clean up operation. The VM downtime reduced about 84%. The improvement, the improvement is so obvious because some change in the QVM that makes the clean up operation much more time consuming than before. There are some works that we are going, we are doing in our playlist, including improving the performance of multiple thread compression in twin giga BPS network environment, uh, improve the performance uh, of the hardware compression accelerator, and uh, using AVX instruction to, uh, to accelerate the zero page checking uh, using zeros zeros using user space network stack to accelerate the uh, data transmission and uh, no migration performance optimization for the 40 gigabps network so uh, if you are interested maybe we can do it together okay that or is there any question The way you identify unused pages, if I understood, is that you have dirty tracking from the start of execution of the, v the, the VM, and dirty page tracking is on all the time that the VM is executing. Is that correct? Yes. Um, have you measured the performance impact of having dirty t page tracking on all the time rather than just while we're migrating? Yes. How much impact? How much does that slow down uh, the VM when we are not migrating? Actually, we have didn't do the, the measurement. Okay. Yes, but we will we will do it. Yes, yeah, so in that case, the guest order was idle, so they weren't actually doing anything in the guest. So they're just measuring how fast the migration is, uh, which is. Yeah. No, yeah. no, not, <laughs> there's no patch for this. Yes. So, so yeah, that's something they haven't done yet. If we if we can find some some better way to solve this issue, maybe we can we can do this. It's very I think it's worse to do this. The way that we were thinking about doing is that when we ask for the dirty bitmap, we start uh, when we start the lo uh, the dirty bitmap log, we start it as clean. We can start it with the pages that are already in the page table mapped. If we start with that, we don't need to start with all the pages mapped uh, with the DTB. Right now, we set the DTB map in KMU as all pages uh, dirty. And then we call the kernel and tell lock, uh, lock pages from now. We can change that, uh, that operation to lock all the kernels that are mapped now. These are the dirty pages. The what? So the linear mapping in the, the guest kernel will have all pages mapped. Not all of them need to be. If they haven't been used yet, they will not be in the page table yet. Nothing will be there. 
the used ones are still not there. So this was the idea, but this is not done yet. So, any more question? Okay. It was a bit quick for me to see how many CPU cores you use for the multi-threaded compression and decompression. And I'm also um, interested if you will do that as well when you have the new CPU instructions that does the compression, decompression hardware. Do you do also multi-threaded then? Okay, uh, the CPU usage is depend on the or the compression and the decompression algorithm that you use. Uh, for some, for Z Lab, your load is is very slow, so the CPU usage is, is very high. As, as I just described, it's about seven hundred and sixty percent when I if I do the compression with eighty threads, but with LZ4 it's much slower. Uh, if I do the compression with six threads, the CPU usage is, uh, is uh, in, including the cumulus itself, is all about 100%. Uh, yes, only takes 50% uh, 50, uh, 50 extra CPU. Yeah. Isn't, uh, isn't it a bit unrealistic in an NFV environment where you have really all CPUs fully on the load usually and you're using then suddenly six CPU cores or something like that just for compressing one VM for migration? No, so car in the current implementation, um, the, 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 the compressor set is not always busy. Uh, it, in most, most of the time, it's, uh, it's idle just to wait Wait for, uh, wait for the instruction to do the compression. No, but I mean, the, usually you have a machine with, let's say, 12 cores or something like that. And then you have like a high performance switch which uses four or two cores. Then you have, let's say, three or two VMs running, and each of them have then another, I don't know, now I need to do the math, but another four cores or something like that. There's not that much cores left then if you have really lots of uh, network processing running there. That's why I'm asking how, how realistic is it to scale up to multiple threads in the compression, decompression phase because you would slow down the other network functions. Uh-huh, uh, yes. Um, actually, multi-thread is not necessary if you can do the compression fast enough. You can do all things in one, in one single thread. Yeah, that's, okay. that's why I'm asking um, if you plan to do, when you have the CPU instructions, I don't know how they look like, for now it's black magic, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, if you plan to do the multi-threading even there, or you plan to go back to a single threaded compression and decompression again, because your CPU is anyway accelerating it. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I, I don't follow you. But it may, maybe this question is too early because I don't know the okay. details about the hardware instruction. But the question is like, do you plan to reduce the number of compression and decompression threats? No, 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 I, 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 I didn't have to explain. I just uh, to modify the current uh, multi-thread compression. So if we, I just use one, in, in the current implementation, this thread can be set by the user. So you can set as a compression thread from one, uh, at least one, or maximum uh, 250 uh, threads. So we, we, can, we, we can change up the implementation and, uh, and just make the, the case for one thread is, uh, is more efficient than, than the current implementation. I think it's the, the, the same. Okay, okay. It's, it's fine. <laughs> okay, thank you. So you had two uh, experiments that you did, and one of them was an uh, idle VM, and the memory was mostly unused. And then the other one you had been writing to a uh, two gigabyte region, right? Yes. So do you have some measurements on how much data actually went over the wire with and without your compression in those two different experiments? Uh, yes, we, we, we really have got some data, but it's not, uh, it's not contained in slides. 
Uh, Can you just tell me about it? I, I, I'm sorry, I can't remember the exact number. Maybe if you want, I, I can I can send to you by email. That'd be great. The um, I'm Mike at Google.com. M I C H E. So okay. um, the slides went by pretty fast, but it, and so I probably read this wrong, but it looked like the blackout time in the instance where you had been dirtying memory was shorter than the blackout time where you didn't dirty memory, and that surprised the heck out of me. Did I see that wrong? Do you want a mic? So, so the one where the guest okay. was idle was um, where he started uh, the page dirty logging uh, before the VM was even running. And so that was one experiment. And um, the other experiment was something else which I don't recall right now. But these are two completely different approaches and two different workloads. So uh, I mean, not comparable. Uh, Is this one? I th uh, the two GB one, the one where the yeah okay so okay. Th this one. Okay. Did you see the slide? Uh, did you see the slide? Go go back. Okay. This one. Oh, okay. It just was so. surprising. Mm. Why? Because I would have expected you to have to send more data over the wire in the case where there was dirty memory. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not quite understand. Because maybe I, I, we can discuss you later. Okay. Uh, I remember that you have mentioned that you will delay the migration end function, but as far as I know, the migration end won't do much work. So I was wondering, by delaying migration end, what, how much time you saved? Uh, oh, uh, yeah. only the only that function. Oh, I, I, I know, I know your question. I think you should, you should refer to the latest Linux kernel. And there is a, a page which drops NERG dirty, uh, uh, drops the small page table entries uh, when stops NERG dirty. You know, in the, in the function migrant end, one thing we should do is to, to stop NERG dirty. And, the, and, and the, the, the patches that we should affect the total and the which prolongs the time, uh, and, and so the time consuming op operation is just in the IO control, IO control. So, yeah, so okay. the time consuming uh, operation is just uh, to disable the log 30. Yes. The previous, the previous kernel has no such issue. Uh, okay, I understand. So, so if so, that's all. Thank you. I have a question at the moment. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. I, I the compression algorithm. How about its performance under heavy memory pressure? Heavy member memory pressure. Pressure. Yeah. Uh, I uh, guess uh, this state was get from a. Very, very little memory pressure, right? Mm, no, actually, in the in this in this slides, the following table shows shows that the performance data in your higher in your in your, your higher overhead RAM right overhead. I uh, which state? The, the below the below table. Below table. Yes. In in this in this table, we 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 the guest runs a workload uh, which runs 
which write, write in read numbers to a one gigabyte memory error periodically with with fast speed. Okay. Yes. So uh, yeah, under this under this uh, we currently have a problem is that uh, on the very heavy memory workload, a uh, the nine magazine uh, usually fail. And uh, does this algorithm help to solve this problem? Uh, it depends on how heavy <laughs> your workload is. If if they're really really too heavy, I think compression can can. Can 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 do little help, yeah. but if the, the workload is just a little, uh, uh, for example, just two uh, two times, some before two times some before, I think the compression will 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 be helpful. Uh, okay, I currently the I uh, KVM line migration have a have a have a have a value uh, if the last iter iteration. It uh, it calculate the time over the the value. It will stop the line migration. Mm -hmm. And um, we in our environment, test environment, we usually find even we adjust this 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 value to two seconds, it still usually fail. I I hope this I hope this algorithm can help to solve this problem. Maybe in the future we can co work. <laughs> okay, right? maybe I can. I can do some help. Okay. So, thank you, everyone. Okay. <laughs>